questions 1 to 7. Listen carefully to the first part of the conversation and answer questions 1 to 7. Rita speaking. What should I do for you? Oh, hi. I'd like to order some stationery. Could I know your name? Jackson Paris. Right. Can I just confirm your account number and the name of your company, Jackson? Sure. The number is 692411. Six nine two four double one. Right. And you're from Rainbow Computer? No. The company is Rainbow Communications. Oh, OK. I'll just fix that on the system. Communications. And what would you like to order, Jackson? Envelopes. We need a box of A4, that is, normal size envelopes. White, yellow or manila? We'll have the plain white, please but the ones with the little windows. OK, one box. A4, white. Just one box, was it? Um, on second thoughts, make those two boxes. We go through heaps of envelopes. As a matter of interest, are they made from recycled paper? No, you can't get white recycled paper. The recycled ones are grey, and they're more expensive, actually. Right, we'll stick to white, then. Something else, Jackson? Yes, we need some coloured photocopy paper. What colours do you have? We've got purple, light blue, blue, light green, whatever you want, pretty much. There are 500 sheets on the pack. Let me see. We're going to need a lot of blue paper for our new price lists. So can you give us 10 packs, please? Make sure it's the light blue, though. 10 packs of the light blue. Anything else that we can help you with? Let me think. What else do we need? I'm sure there was something else. Ends, paper clips, fax paper, computer supplies, office furniture. Oh, yes. We need floppy disks. Do you have those nice coloured ones? Yes, but they're a bit more expensive than the black ones. That's all right. I'm not paying anyway. Right. Floppy disks. What about diaries next year? We've got them in stock already, and it's a good idea to order early. No, I think we're all right for diaries, but something we do need is one of those big wall calendars. You know, one that shows the whole year at a glance. Do you stock those? We certainly do. OK, can you include a wall calendar then, with the other stuff? Just make sure it's got the whole year on the one side. Sure. Now you have some time to look at questions 8 to 10. Now listen to the next part of the conversation and answer questions 8 to 10. And do you have a copy of our new catalogue? No, I don't. But would you send one? Yes, I'll pop one in with the order. You'll find it a lot easier to remember what you need if you have our catalogue in front of you next time. Yes, good idea. And when can you deliver this? Should be with you tomorrow morning. Can you make sure that it's not after 11.30am? Because we have to go out at 12. There's only myself here on Fridays. Fine. I'll make a note in the delivery docket that they should deliver before half past 11. Thanks very much. Thanks. That is the end of part one. You now have half a minute to check your answers.
Now turns to part 2. Part 2. You are going to hear a conversation between two women about the health system in England. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 17. Now listen to the first part of the conversation and answer questions 11 to 17. Hello, Mrs. Sutton. Come in. How are you settling in next door? Have all your things from Canada arrived yet? I thought I saw a removals van outside your house yesterday afternoon. Yes, they came yesterday. We spent all day yesterday arranging them. It's beginning to feel a bit more like home now. Oh, that's good. Look, come in and sit down. Are you all right? You look a bit worried. Well, I am a bit. I'm sorry to bother you so early, Mrs. Smith, but I wonder if you could help me. Could you tell me how I can get hold of a doctor? Our daughter, Anna, isn't very well this morning, and I may have to call somebody out. She keeps being sick and... <sighs> I am beginning to get a bit worried. I just don't know how the health system works here in England. All I know is that it's very different from ours back in Canada. Well, I don't know really where to start. Let me think. Well, the first thing you have to do is find a family doctor. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we call them general practitioners as well. Right. And register with him or her. If you live here, you've got to be on a doctor's list. If you're not, things can be a bit difficult. Mm. Nobody will come out to you if you're not registered. Anyway, they work in things called practices, uh -huh. sort of small groups of family doctors all working together in the same buildings. Now, what you've got to do this morning is register with one of them. Uh. There are two practices near here, so we're quite well off for doctors in this part of Manchester. There's the Dean End Health Centre, about mm, ten minutes' walk away. And there's another practice in South Hay. That's about five minutes away, going towards the town centre. Uh -huh. We are registered at the Dean End one, but they're both OK. There are about six doctors in our practice and four in the other, so ours is quite big in comparison. And the building and everything's a bit more modern. South A is a bit old-fashioned, but the doctors are OK. Their only problem is that they don't have a proper appointment system. Sometimes you have to wait for ages there to see someone. Mm. Anyway, you go to the receptionist in whichever health centre and ask her to register you with a doctor there. You have to fill in a form, but it doesn't take long. Ours is called Dr Jones, and we've been going to him for years ever since we moved here 15 years ago. I wouldn't say he's brilliant, but um, I suppose he's all right, really. We're used to him now. They say he's very good with elderly people, but he does tend to get a bit impatient with children. Listen, the one who's supposed to be really good with small children is Dr Shaw. Ah. I've heard lots of people say that. Mm -hmm. She's young and she's got small children of her own, so you could try registering with her. And if her list's full, I heard somebody say the other day that there's a really nice young doctor at South Hay, a Dr Williams. Mm -hmm. He holds special clinics for people with back trouble, but uh, that's not really your problem, is it? <laughs> now you have some time to look at questions 18 to 20. Now listen to the rest of the conversation and answer questions 18 to 20. 
If you want a doctor to visit you at home, you have to ask for a home visit. You're supposed to do that before 10.30 in the morning, but obviously, if it's an emergency, you can phone at any time, night or day. It might not be your doctor that comes, though. It's quite often one of the other doctors in the practice. It doesn't really seem to make much difference. Mm. Otherwise, you make an appointment to see your doctor at the health centre. You usually get seen the same day. Not always, of course, but usually, as I say. The whole surgery is between 9 and 11.30 every weekday and from 4 to 6.30 Monday to Thursday. Saturdays are only for emergencies. I see. When the doctor sees you, he gives you a prescription. He writes what medication you need on it and you take it to a chemist shop. There's one opposite the centre. If it's for a child under 16, you don't have to pay. So if it's for Anna, there's no problem. The same thing goes if you're unemployed or retired, or if you're pregnant, just as well, because it's not cheap. You pay the same price for each item the doctor has prescribed. At the moment, it's something like £5 per item. So you pay for the medication, but the consultation with the doctor doesn't cost you anything. It's completely free as long as you're a resident here. Mm -hmm. You're going to be here for three years, aren't you? Uh-huh. So, well, there shouldn't be any question of you paying anything to see the doctor. Mm. So that's one less problem to worry about. <laughs> Look, Mrs Sutton, if you want, I'll sit with your daughter for half an hour if you want to go down to the health centre to register. It's no trouble, really. Don't worry. Are you sure you wouldn't mind? That would really help me a lot. I'll ask them if they can send someone round later to see Anna. I, I think I'll try the Dean End Centre. Good idea. Don't worry about Anna. Right. I'll be back as soon as I can. That is the end of part two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part three. Part three. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 26. Now listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 26. Hello, my name is Emiliano. I am a student here and I'd like to rent a house for six months. OK, well you've come to the right place. We specialise in short-term rental. First of all, I would like to get a few details from you. Can you give me your full name, please? Yes, it is Emiliano Nespla. And can you tell me your present address, please? Yes, it's 17 Middle Way, Penrose. I'm living with a homestay family at the moment. That's great. Now, do you have any identification with you? Oh, and we will need a reference from someone who knows you here. Maybe your homestay family. Yes, OK. Here's my passport and the card from my language school. My reference can be Mrs. Alice Thompson. She's my homestay mother and she would mind, I'm sure. You can contact her at the same address as me, of course. OK. If we need to contact you, should we leave a message with your homestay? No, you can speak to me directly. My cell phone number is 021-548-3534. Great. Now, do you have a bank account? You will need to pay your rent by direct debit. You know, it will come out of your account automatically every month. OK. I don't have my bank account details with me now but I can get them and bring them back later today. That's fine. Now, can you tell me what kind of house you are looking for? Do you want to rent by yourself? No, I'm looking for a three-bedroom house. I want to rent with my two friends. I will bring them in to see you later today. Okay. And what areas are you interested in renting in? 
Well, here's a map. Can you see my school? I don't have a car, so I need to take some kind of public transport to school and I don't want to travel for more than 30 minutes each way. Do you think you have anything which is suitable? Yes, we do. Here is a list of available properties. I'll highlight the ones that could be of interest to you. Look at the map and go and have a look at the houses with your friends. Do you have a friend with a car? Yes, I do. Good. So go and look outside the houses. It will give you an idea of what the area is like. But remember, don't go into the garden or knock on the door. If you want to go in and have a look, let me know and we can arrange an appointment. OK. Can you give me an idea of price? Yes. If you look at the list, you can see the weekly rent written next to the house address. Oh, yes. I can see it now. Do I need to pay anything else? Yes, you need to pay a deposit which you will get back when you move out and you have to pay a non-refundable agent fee which is equivalent to one week's rent. You will have to pay your bills when they come in every month too, of course. OK, well, thank you very much for your help. What time should I come back with my friends and my bank details? How about 2.30 this afternoon? That sounds good. Thank you for your help. I'll see you later. Thanks for coming in. Goodbye. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 27 to 30. Now listen and answer questions 27 to 30. Hey, don't throw that can away. Why not? I've finished with it. Yes, but you can recycle things like that. Oh, I haven't got time to recycle everything I throw away. That's a terrible attitude. Don't you care about... Hello, you two. Hi, John. What are you arguing about? Oh, Sam says he doesn't have time to recycle. What do you think? Well, I agree that it can be difficult sometimes. Do you always recycle everything then, Mary? Yes, I think everyone should. I mean, look at the state of the planet. If we don't all start making an effort now, it could be too late. Well, one of the reasons I don't recycle as often as I should is that I don't really know where to go. There are no recycling facilities near me. Well, I know I said I haven't got time, but actually there is a bottle bank near the supermarket just up the road. So I suppose there are limited local facilities. So you can do your recycling outside the supermarket? Yes, but like I said, only limited. It's only a bottle bank. Well, I don't have a car, so it's very difficult for me, but I still do it. Sometimes a friend comes over and we take our recycling together, but not very often. So if your facilities are limited, then mine are very limited. Well, I suppose if we go to all that trouble, I might make more of an effort. Good. If it was up to me, I'd encourage more people to recycle. How? Well, how about some kind of incentive? A reward for anyone who makes an effort to recycle? That's a good idea. But if you think everyone should recycle, then why not penalise those who don't recycle instead of giving something to people that do? If there was a fine for anyone caught throwing recyclable materials in the rubbish, people would take more notice. Well, now you're going too far. Do you really want anyone going through your rubbish just to check if you're following the rules? No, I don't think fines are a good idea. Well, I think we should be doing something. Anyway, I have to go. I've got my social science class next. See you later. Yeah, see you later. Bye. That is the end of part three. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part four. Part four. You will hear a postgraduate psychology student talking to other students about a job satisfaction study he has investigated. Before you listen, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40.
Now listen and answer questions 31 to 40. Good morning, everyone. For my presentation today, I'm going to report on an assignment that I did recently. My brief was to analyze the methods used in a small study about job satisfaction and then to make recommendations for future studies of a similar kind. The study that I looked at had investigated the relationship between differences in gender and differences in working hours and levels of job satisfaction amongst workers. For this purpose, employees at a call center had been asked to complete a questionnaire about their work. I'll summarize the findings of that study briefly now. First of all, female full-time workers reported slightly higher levels of job satisfaction than male full-time workers. Secondly, female part-time workers reported slightly higher levels of satisfaction than female full-time ones did. On the other hand, male part-time workers experienced slightly less job satisfaction than male full-time workers. But although these results seemed interesting and capable of being explained, perhaps the most important thing to mention here is that in statistical terms, they were inconclusive. Personally, I was surprised that the findings hadn't been more definite because I would have expected to find that men and women, as well as full and part-time workers, would experience different levels of satisfaction. So I then looked more carefully at the methodology employed by the researchers to see where there may have been problems. This is what I found. First of all, the size of the sample was probably too small. The overall total of workers who took part in the survey was 223, which sounds quite a lot, but they had to be divided up into subgroups. Also, the numbers in the different subgroups were unequal. For example, there were 154 workers in the full-time group, but only 69 in the part-time group. And amongst this part-time group, only 10 were male, compared to 59 who were female. Secondly, although quite a large number of people had been asked to take part in the survey, the response was disappointingly low. A lot of them just ignored the invitation. And workers who did respond may have differed in important respects from those who didn't. Thirdly, as the questionnaires had been posted to the call center for distribution, the researchers had had very limited control over the conditions in which participants completed them. For instance, their responses to questions may have been influenced by the views of their colleagues. All these problems may have biased the results. In the last part of my assignment, I made recommendations for a similar study, attempting to remove the problems that I've just mentioned. Firstly, a much larger sample should be targeted, and care should be taken to ensure that equal numbers of both genders and both full- and part-time workers are surveyed. Secondly, the researchers should ensure that they are present to administer the questionnaires to the workers themselves. And should they require the workers to complete the questionnaire under supervised conditions so that the possibility of influence from other colleagues is eliminated? Finally, as workers may be unwilling to provide details of their job satisfaction when they are on work premises, it's important that the researchers reassure them that their responses will remain confidential and also that they have the right to withdraw from the study at any time if they want to. By taking measures like these, the reliability of the responses to the questionnaires is likely to be increased, and any comparisons that are made are likely to be more valid. So, that was a summary of my assignment. Does anyone have any questions? That is the end of part four.